Hello and welcome once again to St Matthew's Church, Park Hill, here in Croydon. You are very welcome wherever you may happen to be as you are watching and listening to our service this morning, the fourth Sunday of Easter. Our preacher today is Alison Radford. We will be having a Zoom coffee and chat after the service, but we will not be starting until quarter to twelve. So uh, apologies for those who were unable to join us last time, but uh, 11.45 if you're watching this on Sunday morning. We are, of course, sharing bread and wine together, tokens of God's goodness and his love. And may you know that he is with you and uh, pouring out his love and mercy upon us. So let's begin our worship as we sing the hymn. Come ye faithful, raise the strain of triumphant gladness. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. So together we pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ died to sin once for all, and now he lives to God. 
Let us renew our resolve to have done with all that is evil and confess our sins in penitence and faith. Moments of silent prayer as we bring our sins to the Lord, confident in his promise to forgive us. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with the living bread. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all of this, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as God's forgiven people, we now join the saints and angels in singing glory to God in the highest.
Now the quiet, a moment of silent prayer. Risen Christ, faithful shepherd of your father's sheep, teach us to hear your voice and to follow your command, that all your people may be gathered into one flock, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us prepare ourselves for the word of God as it comes to us in the reading of Holy Scripture. Our hearts and minds are open. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4. The Jewish rulers, elders and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John and Alexander and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man had been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is 1 John chapter 3 verses 16 to 24. We know love by this that he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's good and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him, wherever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the Spirit that he has given us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you to David and Astrid for those readings. Now we sing the hymn, Good Christians All Rejoice and Sing. Now is the triumph of our King. <laughs>
Now Stephen Fitzhugh will bring us our gospel reading. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Pharisees, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd, and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming, and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away, because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And now, in the name of our loving, liberating and life-giving God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Many of you will be very familiar with these sentences, which were often used at the beginning of the Eucharist service. So often have I heard them that they come to mind without effort and are probably my go-to summary of the path I try to follow in my faith. It came to mind again when I read the reading from 1 John. It mentions love several times and asks us, how does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? One positive thing that has come out of the pandemic is that we have seen so many people in this country, where most of us have more of the world's goods than we really need, give so much time and effort into helping their brothers and sisters, their neighbours. We can all remember the stories of NHS heroes who spent long shifts 
kitted out in very restrictive and uncomfortable PPE. When they were interviewed on television, you could quite clearly see the marks on their faces where their tight masks had dug into their skin. There were sad montages of pictures of medical staff who had lost their lives in trying to look after those sick with Covid. We can also remember the more cheerful images of ordinary folk going about with bags of shopping for those stuck at home or without money to buy enough food to feed their families. And we won't forget the pictures of Sir Tom Moore in his challenging walk around his garden and the tremendous response from thousands of people who donated to his fund for the NHS. When we were allowed to travel last summer, I was in Keithley in Yorkshire, visiting my recently widowed aunt. That was the town where Sir Tom had been born. The town square had placards and pictures of him, celebrating their now famous son. There are times when circumstances bring out the best in us. Jesus was talking about this in the passage from John's Gospel. His story about the shepherd shows us what might happen if the sheep are being looked after by someone who doesn't care about them. In other words, doesn't love them. They get taken by the wolf. No doubt the wolf will come in a pack hunting for food. One sheep may die, but the rest are scattered and so are away from the security of the flock. Jesus tells us that in the kingdom there will be one flock and one shepherd. He also says that he will lay down his life because his father has commanded it. I don't think that those who gave their lives for others during the pandemic did so because the father commanded it. But the medical professions do, no doubt have a calling to their work. And this is perhaps only a pedantic difference. How much difference is there between a command from the Father and a calling to a caring profession? My hope is that we won't quickly forget all the good that has been done during the pandemic, right from the selflessness of the medical people and others, down to the little things that most of us have done to help our neighbours. Jesus says in the Gospel reading, Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. Truth has suffered a lot in recent years, but for me the important word there is action. We need to continue to do whatever we can to love our neighbours as ourselves. And finally, I'd like to finish with the last couple of sustaining sentences of the Gospel reading. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the Spirit that he has given us. Amen. Thank you, Alison, for those words. And now we sing the creed. Jesus Christ.
Now our prayers of intercession. To the words, hear us, risen Lord, we respond our resurrection and our life. Loving Lord, in the aftermath of COVID-19, please help us to hold on to the spirit of kindness and concern for neighbours, and our appreciation of relationships when it wasn't possible to meet and share together. May these habits of compassion spread and take root right across society to transform the way we live, work and worship. Lord of the Church, please revive our hearts, inspire our congregations and mobilise the body of Christ at large with a renewed desire to proclaim your truth and demonstrate your compassion through sharing the Gospel and serving others. Please multiply the blessings of church-led projects that alongside preaching the gospel, serve the community, provide relief to those who are lonely and unwell, facing crisis situations and reaching out to families. Hear us, risen Lord, our resurrection and our life. Lord, we remember children and young people who have been seriously disadvantaged by the closure of schools, and colleges and universities during the COVID-19 crisis, especially those with problems at home who could not access the online help they needed and found it hard to learn. Help them according to your transforming grace. Father, we thank you for Christians who engage with schools bringing your light and salt to staff and students. Please protect every opportunity to share truth, and show compassion and promote harmony through their presence, practical involvement and prayers in Jesus' name. And we especially bring before you the work of Scripture Union workers who throughout the country are able to now take RE lessons and assemblies. Indeed, we live before you, the local schools, Park Hill Juniors and Infants and Tennysons, thanking you for the strong links forged with them over the years. We especially remember the head teachers, leadership teams and all staff members, some under tremendous pressure, catching up with missed months of teaching. Hear us, risen lords, our resurrection and our life. We now lift before you those on our intercessions list who are unwell. At the end of this long list, I'm going to pause so that we can lift before our Lord any others known to us. We now lift before you Hugh, Roger, Anne and Ray, Sue, Howard, Claire, Vivian, Karen and Heather, Kamal, Linda, Joan, Yvonne, Paul and Norman, Sue, Janet, Rahini, Bob, Jenny, Charlotte, John, Nicholas, Sigan, Peter, Rebecca, Rose and Percy, Jeanette, Irma, Pam and Alan, Nicole, Dorothy, Zeta, Gordon and Doris, Frankie, Iris, Matt, Tim, Thelma, Obozedi, Maureen. And in the silence, others known to us. We remember Dorothy Cherrington, passed away last month, and we remember her family who mourn her loss, Patricia. Robert, Jennifer, Alan and Hopeton. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Since Steve recorded these prayers of intercession, we've heard the very sad news that Frankie Baino for whom we've been praying for a long time, has very sadly died. He was the activities coordinator at Wilhelmina House, so very well known to those of us who are 
involved in taking services there. So we commend Frankie into God's care and we remember Anna, his widow, at this time of grief and loss. Now we come to the peace, and if you are by yourself, may you know God's peace to be with you, in you, surrounding you. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Alleluia. If you are with others, then let us now share the sign of Christ's peace. We sing the hymn, I will sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me. Eucharistic prayer. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, 
your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Now we give you thanks because through him you have given us eternal life and delivered us from the bondage of sin and the fear of death into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take Eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Christ is the bread of life. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. And so, Father, according to mine, his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice, made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory. We celebrate this memorial of our redemption, as we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of St. Matthew and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, for honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. 
rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. You have bread and wine. Let us now share these tokens of parting. The body of Christ broken for us. Keep us in eternal life. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for us. Keep us in eternal life. Amen. Sing the hymn, Faithful Shepherd, Feed.
the prayer after communion, a moment of silence. Merciful Father, you gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the Good Shepherd, and in his love for us to lay down his life and rise again. Keep us always under his protection, and give us grace to follow in his steps, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Keep us in the power of your Spirit, so we may live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And we sing our closing hymn, Christ the Lord is risen again, Christ hath broken every chain. So before the blessing, once again, a very big thank you to everyone who's taken part in today's service. Particular thanks again to John for all of his hard work behind the scenes. So now let us open our hearts to receive God's rich blessings. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, work in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you, and all those whom you love and all those for whom you pray, this day and forevermore. 
Amen. We are raised to new life with Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.